Of all the most recent developments for the tourist in Scotland, none can match the return of the steam locomotive to the railways of the Western Highlands after an absence of over 20 years. appeal of Britain's most scenic railways has long been recognized, but providing a steam service in these remote areas isn't easy. The running costs of steam in the old days were so high that the lines in northwest Scotland were only just saved from closure by the advent of diesels in 1960. First to show the way were the volunteers of the Straths Bay Railway at Abbey Moor, who turned out their showpiece, an LMS Black 5 locomotive, for charter trips from Inverness in 1982. The response was overwhelming, and every trip was oversubscribed. Armies of amateur photographers turned up to record the revival of steam in the Highlands. The route chosen was the old Highland Railway line to Skye, which reached Loch Carn in 1870 and Kyle of Lochausch in 1897, a distance of 82 miles. Inverness Station is one of the oldest in the country, dating back to 1858, when the line from Aberdeen reached the Highland capital and linked it to the railway network. Hanging in the station concourse is the bell that was sounded for the departure of the Aberdeen train. In this historic setting, Abbey Moore's Black Five prepares for the trip to Kyle. The sandboxes are topped up, ready for the gradients that lie ahead, and the driver makes a final check of the running gear. All part of the classic ritual that lends an air of excitement to the departure of a steam train. After leaving Inverness, the train skirts the shores of the Bewley Firth on its way to Dingwall. A few miles further on, the railway should have passed through Strathpeffer, but the landowners objected, and the little spa town was left at the end of a short branch. The main line was forced to make a steep detour at Fodderty, and trains slowed to a crawl as they slogged up four miles at one in fifty to the summit at Raven Rock. The railway now passes along Strathbran in Wester Ross, past a chain of lochs, among them Loch Coolan, the Loch of the Holly Trees. The normally quiet Highland stations shook under the onslaught of trainloads of enthusiasts discovering the Highlands anew. This is Garth, where the steam train has to wait to cross the regular diesel-hauled one 
on the single line from the Kyle. Many of the passengers came from south of the border, but the Scottish fraternity were well to the fore. Another of the Highland stations, set beside the forest of Atterdale, is Strathcarran, the last stop for the steam special to Carl. Torridon Mountains, reputed to be the oldest on earth, dwarf the Black Five as it steps out along Glen Carron towards the sea lochs of the west coast. Loch Carn used to be the end of the line where travellers took a boat from Strome Ferry on a four hour trip to Skye. When the rival North British Company built their route to Mallee, serving Skye from the south, the Highland Company, for fear of losing traffic, extended their line to Kyle of Lochausch, reached in Victoria's Jubilee year of 1897. Here, the Black Five pauses on the original Highland Railway Pier, where the ferry crosses the narrow strait to Kailakan in a matter of minutes. Here, too, the steam excursion ended, and number 5025 started back past the Black Islands of Erbosaig Bay, along the 82 miles to Inverness before returning home to the Straths Bay Railway at Abbey Moor. The roads to the Isles have always had a certain romance about them, and none more so than the route to Mallee, whose remoteness and beauty are linked with a historic past. For these were the shores where Bonnie Prince Charlie landed in 1745 in his ill-fated bid to claim the English throne. The monument at Glenfinnan stands at the spot where the Stuart standard was first raised by the rebel Highland clans, whose hopes for a Jacobite victory were finally dashed at Culloden in the following year. Against this stirring background, the traveller of today can journey the 42 miles from Fort William to Malig by train and enjoy a grandstand view of the finest scenery that any railway in Britain has to offer. What's more, the trip can be made behind a steam locomotive, not just for the occasional special, but to a regular public timetable throughout the summer. Our locomotive is another ex-LMS Black Five, dating from 1937, and loaned by Paddy Smith, who normally keeps it at Carnival. Soon after leaving Fort William, the scene is dominated by mighty Ben Nevis as the train skirts round the shores of Loch Eel.
Then comes the most impressive structure on the line, the great 21-arch viaduct at Glenfinnan, sweeping across the glen in a graceful curve at a height of 100 feet. Dating from the 1890s, it's one of the earliest concrete structures of its size in the world. Passengers on the inaugural steam run were allowed to get out and watch from the hillside as the train crossed the viaduct again. A rare treat indeed, for this splendid scene is otherwise only accessible to the most determined hiker. The Black Five sets off again and shows off one of its lesser known tricks, gently blowing smoke rings down the glen. Higher up the line beyond Glenfinnan, another glimpse of the great Ben Nevis, by now nearly 20 miles away. The railway is never far from water, salt or fresh. The train now runs for three miles alongside the freshwater Loch Island, whose shores rank among the major scenic attractions of the line. Jamming the narrow roads, the train photographers in hot pursuit. After leaving Loch Islet, the train climbs past the little Kirkut Pole niche on its way to Arisay. At a SAG station, villagers crowd in to see the first steam train for 21 years on the line to Malig, 
while a modern diesel waits for the single line section to clear. For the locomotive crew, Colin Ross and Alec Howey, the comfort of a diesel cab is exchanged for a noisy, swaying footplate, swirling in coal dust, and rattling continuously to the thump of the pistons. Afterwards, they said they loved every minute of it. Next, a view of the famous white sands of Mora, gently warmed all year round by the waters of the Gulf Stream. At the Mora Road Crossing, just three miles short of Malig, a stop has to be made as the station is now an unstaffed halt and there's nobody to open the gates except the train crew. A good chance, too, to give the locomotive a better grip by laying sand on the rail for by now the sandboxes are empty after the constant gradients on the journey. On the final stretch of the line towards Malig, the locals turn out to see the steam train with scant regard for their own safety. The train finally reaches Malig, directly opposite South Sky. The prime reason for building a railway to this remote spot was the fish. It's hard to imagine now that Malig in its heyday was the biggest herring port in all of Europe, with catches of many hundreds of tons landed daily, and all of it transported by rail. The landings now go by road, and it's many years since the sound of a locomotive last echoed across the quay. For the return trip to Fort William, the engine has to run backwards, as there's no longer a turntable at Mallee. Another historic site on the line is Loch Nan Nuam, where ships of the French fleet brought Bonnie Prince Charlie for his triumphant landing in the 45, and a year later secretly sailed away with the defeated young pretender 
on the ebbing tide of the Stuart fortunes. For students of railway history, the past has actually come alive with the appearance of Maud, a vintage North British Railway 060 locomotive built in 1891 and typical of the engines that worked on the Malig line when it opened in 1900. carriages turned out to be a bit of a strain for the veteran local, which had to be worked hard to make the steep grade towards Glenfinnan. At the station, a stop was made to take water, and members of the Scottish Railway Preservation Society, who were responsible for restoring Mod to working order, carefully lubricate the running gear before proceeding further on this Mod's most prestigious outing to date. crisp light of a highland spring shows off the North British veteran to perfection as she labours up the glen with her trainload of admirers. An engine being driven too hard does unfortunately tend to shower the countryside with red-hot cinders and a potentially dire result if immediate action is not taken. A flying squad of fire beaters had been thoughtfully provided by British Rail in Fort William to follow the train and look out for trackside fires, applying first aid treatment to the stricken embankments where necessary. Before Maud returned, the fires had been put out and she calmly chuffed past Loch Alt in blissful ignorance of the havoc innocently caused on the outward trip. In future, her load would be reduced to three coaches. With a featherweight private charter of just two coaches, the Black Five romps past Glenfinnan on its way to pick up a party arriving at Malig by boat. The scene at Arisaig is a perfect reminder of the unhurried days of branch line steam when village life centred round the departure of a train and everyone had time for a chat. 
the arrival of a British Railways diesel for Glasgow brings us sharply back to the present day. An observation car is regularly provided in the season as an added attraction. The token for the single line is handed over and the black five is ready to go. Buffet car and saloon receive their guests at Valley, and the Black Five takes them back to Fort William on a private view of the scenic splendors of the line. steam-hauled tour of Scotland's finest array of lakes and mountains can now be enjoyed three times a week by anyone who cares to turn up at Fort William and buy a ticket for yesterday. <laughs>